Alright, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be reacting to some of the content that I've made for my Instagram page and how what I'm saying applies to cervical instability and how HFT can address cervical instability. Let's take a look at the first video. Why do you have chronic weakness or instability but you also have chronic tightness throughout your body? While this seems contradictory, there's a very good reason for it and it's the same reason why no matter how much stretching or adhesion rolling you do, you can never seem to get this tightness to go away. Fascia holds the body together through tensegrity. This is positive tension and tensegrity gets impacted when you have any sort of injury, causing the fascia to become loose. That can make the fascia entangled, disorganized, and then adhesions can occur. When we lose tension, the body often tries to compensate to make up for this. So then other muscles or other areas will become tight. So no matter how much rolling or stretching you do, this is not actually fixing the overall issue because we've lost tension and that's the reason why these areas are becoming tight. We must remodel the body to actually fix the underlying cause of this issue. This is also a reason why compensation patterns can occur because we've lost tension in one area, so then force transmission may be different in another area and may concentrate in an area like the patella tendon or the Achilles. So if you've had an ankle injury, if you've had a knee injury, if you've torn a hamstring and you've lost tension from your tensegrity network, then later on down the track you may form compensation patterns which may cause some type of tendonitis or even stress fracture. So, to actually fix the issue, we must remodel the fascia connections and create strength and connections across multiple joints with fascia remodeling, with hyperarch fascia training. This is the reason why it's been so successful because it's not neglecting what actually holds the body together in the first place, what forms the structure inside the internal foundation, which is the fascia. The muscles themselves are being held together by fascia. So if we're overlooking this, we're going to overlook the problem and then later on down the track, you may still run into issues. Why do you have chronic weakness or instability? Alright, first things first, a lot of people don't understand the fact that ligaments and tendons actually fall under the subheading of fascia. Fascia is connective tissue and it only excludes cartilage. The connective tissue is one unit, it's one piece, it's holding the body together through tension, through tensegrity. So if that's impacted in any area, it can affect any other area of the body. And then force transmission, not from running and jumping, but even just from standing and being, can then change and then you can get concentrations in specific areas. So that's why it seems contradictory that you can have cervical instability, but you can also have a chronically tight neck because there are certain areas that are trying to compensate for the loss of tension in the tensegrity network, which is positively holding the body together, but then you get the negative tension that then constricts, creates tightness, creates adhesions to try and make up. It's a compensation pattern, but then as I said in the video, when we have a look at it in a sports perspective, you can get compensation patterns form, which means force is then directed to other areas. So for example, as I said, people can get tendonitis in the knee when the tensegrity network has been affected. That's then the weakest point. That's where tension has been lost or forces directed to or concentrated in. But when you have cervical instability, it could be somewhere else. And also, we know that when we get cervical instability, we're losing tension in the fascia network because fascia injuries make up 86% of injuries. Even if you think you have an injury on the muscle, there's a chance it's actually on the fascia layer inside the muscle. And therefore, we can also get instability in other areas like our shoulders, our traps, etc. And then that can cause chronic tightness. So no matter how much you're trying to release that tension, it's not fixing the issue because you're not creating a structural change. You're just trying to release, release, release but the overall problem of lack of tensegrity is still there. So HFT is about providing strength and structure across multiple joints, remodeling the fascia and allowing the strength to hold the body together through tensegrity, through positive tension in all moments, just sitting while also walking, running, etc., etc. and obviously it builds up. But if you don't have the proper tension and tensegrity in the fascia network, then other things are going to happen. You're going to get other pain, soreness, etc. Is stretching right, good or bad video. when it comes to a hyperarch fascia training perspective? First, let's hear what Chong has to say about this. We do these towards the end of periodization. The goal of hyperarch fascia training is to build up fascia tensegrity strength first. Once the fascia connection gets better, you do not need to do mobility exercise all the time because the fascia fibers will be aligned and less entangled. In hyperarch fascia training, it comes later. Once we build up the hyper stiffness in the fascia tissue first, the body will naturally ask you to stretch. So we have a more natural progression to stretching. We do not want the body to be super loose in Something that I want to make very clear is that stretching was a very important part of my program. However, the sequencing and how this is implemented is very, very important. Another thing to keep in mind is that the stretches you're probably thinking. So something that Chong said in the little clip that I played of him talking is the fact that he said, we, at, right at the end, he said, we don't want the fascia to be too loose in the beginning. 
the hyper arc fascia training stretches and I'm, I'm not being, um, I'm not, it's, this isn't hyperbole, but it genuinely is completely different to anything you've seen before. And I can't talk specifically about what it is. I know that might annoy some of you, but this is something that Chong hasn't shared publicly, so I have to respect that. But essentially, it only works if you have created some form of connection from the feet to the glutes, and then also from the hands to the lats and core. This is our myofascial chains. This is what we talk about when we talk about creating connections. And when you create these connections from the hand to the lats and core, that's also remodeling the neck because fascia is one tissue, you get it by now. But you need to have a level of connection for the fascia stretches to work because you want to have new connections form, have some base level of strength. And then when you do the stretches, it's realigning and reorganizing the fascia. It's getting rid of the adhesions. However, if the fascia is too loose and the web is too loose, then it's just going to stick back together. So you actually have to incorporate it with the strength, the strength work that you're doing with the fascia, with the remodeling work that you're doing. And that's why working with Chong is really important because he knows the right sequencing, the right times to incorporate this into the program. So you've got to create strength first and then we can reorganize with the stretches later on. But it doesn't mean you're not reorganizing throughout the program. Everything's happening at once, but there are obviously things that you can do at different stages that will have a better impact. So sequencing is really important. Video three, I'm just going to read out what it says on here. Tennis ball rolling makes the fascia layers slide so the HFT exercises can remodel new connections, but it is the exercises that remove the adhesions. Think in terms of fascia tensegrity without tension, fascia is slack. So it's exactly what I said before. If you're trying to stretch and loosen and maneuver the fascia too much before it actually has innate stiffness or innate connections, then you're just going to loosen the web more. It'll become more entangled. So the fascia rolling allows the layers to slide and glide against each other. So then you can actually remodel and create those new connections through the exercises. So that's why adhesion rolling is done a lot throughout the program. It's not to remove the adhesion specifically, but it's to get the fascia to slide and move. So then you can create the strength, which then gets rid of the adhesions because you're adding tension back into the system and therefore the fascia is not going to become entangled. Video four, my injury wouldn't resolve. My fascia tensegrity network got damaged. I made my fascia imbalances worse by lifting weights. Stop blaming muscle weakness for a fascial problem. This is something I see a lot in the cervical instability communities. They're talking about creating strength in the muscles, etc., etc. But if your problem is to do with the fascia tensegrity network and then you start building up your muscles, you're creating a further imbalance because you're working a separate system. Your fascia, if you have poor connections, if you've had an injury, is not going to get trained in the same way that your muscles are when you're building up muscle strength through hypertrophy. So ultimately, you might be able to, in the short term, use muscle size or strength as a crutch to make up for the fascia tensegrity strength that you've lost. But as you age... As your muscles atrophy, meaning disappear, your fascia is also degenerating and then you're left with a double whammy. You're left with two issues that then you're going to get further issues later on down the track. Or even, as I said, you're creating further imbalances. You may even, may even get further issues now. As you age, fascia dehydrates, it degenerates, it thickens, it doesn't slide as well. So if you were going to accelerate that process through injury, as you age, it's just going to get worse and worse as you continue to age. And as I said, muscle inevitably is going to atrophy. It's going to get smaller. You don't see old people that live a long time with big muscles. So their muscles are atrophying. And then, as I said, you're going to get left with two issues. So by lifting weights, it might seem to cover up the problem in the short term, but you've not actually fixed this, the problem. As I said, 86% of injuries happen on the fascia, not the muscle. This is tensegrity. If tensegrity is lost, we have to add the tension back in and remodel the fascia. That includes in the neck, obviously. Okay, this is a good one. If you've injured a ligament causing instability, it's not just the ligament that is affected. Ligaments equal fascia. Fascia equals endless web, no beginning or end. Endless web equals tensegrity. The multiple areas are affected when tension is lost, causing instability. Tensegrity and fascia connections are restored through HFT, hyperarch fascia training. Physical therapy, prolotherapy, and surgery does not change the fascia integration and connections. So first things first, I'm covering the fact that ligaments are not just the thing that get impacted when you have an injury. Fascia, as we've talked about so many times, work off tensegrity. Think of the spider's web holding everything together in multiple directions that's connecting to the ligaments, that's connecting to the tendons, that's integrating through the bone. As I've said before, there is an ongoing discussion that says that bone may count as fascia because you have the struts and the strings 
of the tensegrity network. You have the, the tension, the fascia, and the integral parts, the bone, but the fascia also webs its way through the bone. So everything is getting affected. This is just on a physical level. We haven't even talked about the neurological level, the sensory level, how the signals are being sent through the fascia, through the nerves from the brain, which can also cause other neurological symptoms, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. So when this instability, uh, when this tension is lost and we get instability, trying to do things like prolotherapy is not going to change the structure of the fascia. You might be able to regenerate and heal some cells that have been damaged, but you're not making new connections. Think of each vertebra or each joint being a junction. Fascia is creating connections across every single junction in every single direction. And so when you do surgery, even though you might have things fused together, which might create some strength, or even though you might heal some ligaments or even PT, as I said, with the muscles, you might be changing the muscle structure. You're not changing the tensegrity structure. You're not changing your connections, which is ultimately what should be holding your body together in the first place. All right, next video that I'll read out. Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If you can't resolve your injury through mainstream fascia neglecting methodologies, then it's brave of you to continue to neglect the 22 kilos of fascia material inside your body and expect a different result. Darwin said, the one who is the most adaptable to change is the one who survives. Update your understanding. This is my way of saying, if you don't understand how fascia works, you're missing 22 kilos of you, 18 to 22 kilos of you. Let's call it 20 kilos. Imagine you weigh 80. That's a huge percent of you. And then when you start to understand and open your eyes to what role fascia plays inside the body, and then what happens when it's damaged, you're like, oh my goodness, we've missed this the whole time. This is why people's injuries aren't getting resolved. So what I'm trying to say here is if you keep trying the same things based off the same methodologies, the same understanding, going to PTs, going to doctors that have all learnt the same material, they haven't learnt about the fascia, then you're probably going to continue not to get better because you haven't included this huge piece of the puzzle that has that connects every single system, that has effect on every single system. Every single system affects the fascia that holds the body together, that's responsible for performance, which is obviously at the other end of the spectrum as chronic injury. So all of these things are so significant and not understanding how fascia works and then doing things that don't attend to the fascia, ultimately you're probably going to have a hard time getting better. And one of the best things about HFT is HFT also explains the spectrum of how people can improve doing different things. The fascia integration also shows you how you can how some people improve doing one thing but another person doesn't because there are individual differences, there are anatomical differences, and HFT attends to each one of those differences. So if people say, "Oh, I got better lifting weights, I got better with prolotherapy, etc., etc." Fantastic. But fascia explains why that's possible and why different people get different results doing different things. So I like when people say, but I got better doing this. And I say, ah, but your internal foundation is different to this person and that's why you have different results. Last video. Imagine your fascia was two times stronger than it is now. Imagine it was two times better at remodeling, repairing your injuries. When fibroblast cells, fascia cells, turn into myofibroblast cells, this is made possible. But this is unique to HFT and a big reason Chong gets the results that the mainstream cannot. But there is a specific recipe. This is the work of hyperarch fascia training, not just fascia exercise. So as you guys have seen, I've recommended some exercises that you can try to get an understanding of what's going on in your program. Obviously, you want to see what potentially might be going on, what might be occurring. But ultimately, it's this recipe of hyperarch fascia training that has made the company so successful, that has made Chong's work so successful, that has had hundreds and hundreds, if you go on Chong's YouTube page, of positive testimonials because it's Chong's attention to detail. He's taking in, I'll read, actually, let me read the description I've written up. Chong is taking in your data, he's putting it into his algorithm, his understanding, his knowledge. And then he's using sequencing to remodel your dysfunction. He's giving you exactly what you need in that moment, which changes week in, week out. This is not a set program. And then he's using a specific recipe to turn the fibroblast cells into myofibroblast cells. So a normal fascia cell into a fascia cell that's twice as strong and has twice the ability to remodel. This process takes about 12 weeks to 100 days. So even when you finish your 12-week program, you're going to continue to get results after if you continue to do the work. That's the really exciting thing. And it's these myofibroblast cells that allow the body to remodel 
quite quickly. When we look at elite athletes, they have a greater density of myofibroblast cells. That's why, potentially, once they've had surgery, they recover quicker. That's why they recover quicker after games. They can handle such a big load that's put on them. And this is another reason why they become the athletes that they do, because their fascial network is neurological. It's sending signals, and this can update differently to somebody that doesn't have the same myofibroblast density. I like to think of it like a fascia web that's also a computer program. The program needs updating with the signals coming through, just like your phone gets updated so it can run better. But then you also have the web, which is the physical structures. So you have the physical role, which is also being influenced by the neurological role, which is then also being influenced by the type of cell that's in the structure, which is also being influenced by the energy that the structure can transmit and distribute. So you have piezoelectricity, which has to get to the different areas in order to also improve this healing process and this recovery process. So HFT is just like this big bucket of all these positive things occurring to then create a good healing response. So as I've said, HFT is a formula. It's not just do this exercise and you'll get this result. Otherwise, he'd just be handing out PDF documents to everyone really has to be helping people with complex issues with their own individual needs to then apply their data, what they need in that moment, to the algorithm, to the recipe, getting all the steps right and all the sequences, so then you can get the end result.